All right, good evening, everybody. As you come in, I see that uh, we've opened up the webinar and um, people are coming in. So welcome, welcome for, uh, welcome. <clears throat> and thanks for joining us for tonight's webinar on public A-zone opportunities. Um, we're gonna be covering basically this topic because the general deer season opens in, uh, on August 14th. And we wanna give you guys uh, and gals some opportunities to go out there and uh, you know, find, find some opportunities to go out and hunting. So uh, welcome for, welcome again. I'm saying welcome a lot. And I'm, I'm just uh, really kind of ready for this to, to get going and have you guys have a good deer season. This is the first start of it. A zone archery has already started. And I've seen some bucks get harvested already, so that's a good thing. And I'm glad people are getting out there in their pursuits. So it is 6.01. I'll give them one more minute before we start off with some polls like we normally do. And uh, the newly incorporated jokes, you can tell me whether they're funny or not. Uh, last week's was pretty good, so we'll see how this week goes. All right. Somebody's sending me a text. I got to make sure I answer it so that, oh yeah, somebody's asking me to introduce myself. Just so you know, and a lot of people who are on here have probably been here enough times, but we'll find that out actually in the next one of the poll questions is, my name is Lieutenant Sean Olagi. I'm with the Hunter Ed program. I've been with Hunter Ed program since 2006, and I'm currently the advanced Hunter Ed program uh, uh, coordinator as, as of last year. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we're not holding any live clinics like we normally do or we should be doing. We've been hosting these webinars and even those have been very good. I'm enjoying putting them together and people are enjoying watching them. We have one that's actually uh, gotten over 7,000 views, the Wild Pig Clinic that uh, Matt Gill helped us out and Jared, who is one of our guest speakers, uh, uh, helped out with um, way back in, I think it was March or February. So they are posted to our CDFW YouTube channel. You can always watch uh, anything that you missed there. And thanks for coming on. As far as questions, please, please, please uh, put them in the question answer function. It's easier for our panelists to track them. Uh, the chat is for maybe a comment. It's not really a question. Um, please uh, go ahead and do it that way. Uh, the question and answer function it will allow the panelists to track your question and you'll be able to track your answer. It won't end up in a string of a text check string. Um, might be hard to find that there. So I will appreciate that. If you guys get out of control, I will shut down the chat function so that we can keep you geared towards the question and answer. So don't make me be a bad guy. I like seeing some of your comments. So anyways, um, I am seeing that um, one of one of my hunter ed instructors or past hunter ed instructors, I was the coordinator for Central District, is having a birthday today. Uh, number sixty five. Uh, happy birthday, Lon! Uh, congratulations. All right. So as you know, I like to start off our um, webinars with a uh, poll function, uh, the poll, and I'm going to launch that right now. So here we go. So which unit do you live closer to, uh, the north or the south? Now, some of you may not know what that is yet, but uh, the north uh, A zone is above San Francisco, and the south one is everything south of that. So just kind of curious where, you, where you're from, where our participants are coming from, and where we might need to focus a little bit tonight. And then the joke <laughs> is two skunks observed a deer hunter sneaking through the woods on an early Saturday morning. I hope he's not going to shoot us at us, said one skunk. The second skunk bowed his head and said, let us spray. <laughs> the reason I'm reading these is because these polls don't show up in our webinar recordings. And just so people can understand what uh, is being talked about, I'll uh, read the questions and, and read the answers. So I'm gonna end the poll. And it looks like we're split, which is the way it should be. We should have, that's the, the zones are almost um, equal in size. And uh, as far as demographics, there's probably more people up in that closer neck of the woods to the north. So we have a split of 48% to 52%. And 90% feel, 
figured the joke was funny. So, oh, I'm, I haven't been sharing the results for you. I'm sorry. I've been doing this for a while. So there's the results. You have them there. All right. So let's go ahead and do the next question. How do I get back to the stop share and polling number two? Gosh, this is not going well for me. Polling number two, here it is, I'm launching it. Have you hunted a zone before? Yes, unsuccessfully. Yes, successfully. And the third option is not yet. <clears throat> Joke, on the first day of the deer hunting season, a hunter fell out of a tree, broke both his legs. Why couldn't this happen on my last day of hunting? The hunter cried to the doctor. Doctor replied, it did. <clears throat> <laughs> he's not hunting anymore this season so anyways i think it's funny all right so i'm gonna give it two more seconds here uh zero one there we go and pulling and i'm sharing the results so uh 35 percent said yes you have hunted a zone before and successfully uh or oh, wait, that was unsuccessfully. 27% said yes, they've hunted it successfully. And 38% said not yet. And joke came in at an 87% funny. So that's how we are going today. And the last poll, this one's for my sake to see what experience you have with our program. So have you participated in our advanced hunter ed program uh, before? Uh, pick all that apply. So if, if you haven't uh, been with us, put that. If you've attended a live clinic, select that. If you've only uh, been with live webinars and uh, also answer if you've watched any recorded webinars. All right. And the last joke is, did you hear the one about the skunk that entered your hunt camp? Ah, never mind. it really stinks. <laughs> this one's, that one's the worst. I had a hard time finding a third joke, so. It was a stinky joke too. <clears throat> All right, I'm in polling here in three seconds. Three, two, one. I'm gonna share my results. And so uh, it seems like the majority have attended one of my live webinars. Thank you for coming, I really do appreciate it. But the ones who've watched the recording, uh, well, that number is 61%. So I have you guys back. I thank you for coming, coming back and joining us. 41% um, have watched record, recorded webinars. 32% uh, have never been here. Welcome. I'll say that again. I've been saying it a lot tonight. And then 35% uh, have attended live clinics. And I can't wait to get back into that. Uh, still hoping and, and praying that we can get those going again because I love seeing you in person and, and helping everybody out to share this tradition that I really love to have. All right, so those are our poll results. I, I really like seeing the last poll here. Uh, thank you for your for coming on tonight. All right, so I am joined by Jared Strauss from uh, Paso Robles. Um, Jared, I know I have a slide here and I'm gonna start sharing uh, my screen with uh, our program, um, just a second. I need to open this up and start my slideshow. Okay. And Zoom, share screen, public Zoom. It's not showing me. Okay, come on. I am having some difficulties tonight, so. Bear with me. That is not it. Boy, this has been. There you go. I'm up. Yep. All right. Am I on the? You need to. You need to do the slideshow now. You're still on the. All right. I've tried, and it's doing it. Not showing it right. Stop share. This last couple of times, it's been giving me a little bit of grief. I think I had it now. 
Is that it? Go. Oh, yeah. All right. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So we're going to talk about public A zone opportunities. Uh, California's biggest deer hunt zone is the A zone. All right. Um, Ted Jared Strauss joins us. He's the NRVP, which is Natural, Natural Resource Volunteer uh, Program Coordinator. Uh, we do have a volunteer program that um, we use some volunteers to help our pro, uh, department um, carry out some missions, you know, biologically, enforcement-wise, all kinds of different stuff. So he is the NRVP coordinator for the Central Enforcement District, which is very expansive now. Uh, yes. <laughs> he's patrolled San Luis Obispo <laughs> County, Monterey County, uh, the coastline, and southeastern San Luis Obispo County. Uh, he resides in Paso Robles, and you can see him there with this lovely picture of his family. Welcome, Jared. How's it going? Um, really quick, I want to cover some facts about A zone. Okay. Uh, it has the highest tag quota of all California's deer zones at 65,000 tags. Uh, tags in my career, I have not seen them sell out, so it seems like they're always available. Uh, it includes the north unit and the south unit. We saw a map there, and I'll show you one again later on. But uh, pretty much along the coastline, all the way to the valley floor. Um, in the south, it goes to 99. It's all everything west of 99. And in the north, uh, it does a little jog and, and covers uh, some, some parts uh, west of I-5. So it has the highest reported buck harvest of all the zones, uh, believe it or not, at 5,200 uh, bucks reported, uh, with 2,700 in the southern zone and 2,400 in the northern zone. The next closest uh, to that would be in the B zone, which includes six zones. There's B1 through six. And in that area, they've harvested 3,500 uh, bucks. It has the earliest archery season, which actually starts always on the second Saturday in July, which this year happened to be July 10th, and it goes through August 1st. And the earliest general season, uh, which always starts on the second Saturday in August, which this year happens to be August 14th, one of the later starting points that we can have. <clears throat> And it'll proceed all the way till September 26, which should make it for actually a very good, this is a season you wanna be hunting a zone because the later it goes and the closer it gets to cooling off in the, in the fall, uh, the better your success rate will be. Um, primarily forked horned bucks are, the, are what's harvested in, in the a zone. Uh, there are other points, but if you look at the um, big game digest, you'll see that the other, uh, you know, three point or four point or better uh, are very minimal as far as percentage of bucks taken. Uh, the other part about A zone, some more facts, is they're primarily black tail deer, okay? But in the south zone, you will get some California mule deer in uh, San Luis Obispo, Santa Barbara, Ventura, and Los Angeles counties. Um, according to this map here, and let me get my laser pointer. You can see that the A zone actually proceeds all the way down into this area uh, right here. Um, that's Los Angeles County. That's um, right. No, that's San Luis Obispo, Santa Barbara, Ventura, Los Angeles. So this this area right here, these are all um, California mule deer. There could be some Columbia black tail deer in that area also, but our A zone all incorporates this whole area up through in here. Okay, so that's the area we're concentrating on tonight. Um, and although you may see bears anywhere in the A zone, uh, they're only legal to take as follows. So in the South A zone, you can only harvest them if you have a bear tag in Santa Barbara County, Ventura, and Los Angeles counties. Um, in the Northern zone, you can harvest them in Calusa, Lake, Mendocino, and Yolo. And those portions of Napa and Sonoma counties, they're northeast of Highway 128. Now, some of you say, I don't know where that is. Uh, you need to just get a map. This is the definition of that, that northern zone uh, bear area. And um, I do have a link. There's going to be links to a lot of the stuff that are, that's going to be covered tonight. I'm going to send you after our webinar. So stand by for that. Um, the other good thing about this A zone is a lot of it incorporates wild pig uh, areas. So encounters with wild pigs can be a total possibility while you're deer hunting. Um, just make sure you get yourself a, a pig tag 
and then check the regulations for the areas that you're hunting. Sometimes if you have a special permit or special access, sometimes they limit what you can actually take on that permit. Um, but in most places, if you're on public land and you see a pig, um, it's going to be, you know, fair game to take as long as you're um, in possession of a pig tag. Okay. When we talked about the deer and what types there are in, in those zones, um, I talked about Columbia blacktail, which is going to be an H here. You can see that it has the most uh, dark color top of the tail. And the California mule deer, which is this, you'll see that there's some white, like a white bridge uh, between the end of the, the rump and the tip of the tail, whereas the black tail does not have that. So here's some different tail. Uh, markings, they are, they're somewhat, you know, pretty much like that. Uh, if you get into the Rocky Mountain mule deer, which are predominantly on the, um, the east side of the Sierras, you're going to see that, you know, they have the white just totally absent of any black. They go uh, white and then they're only black on the tips. So there's different tail types help you determine what type of subspecies of mule deer that you have. Okay. Let's talk about the A zone, the north unit. Okay, uh, you can see how big it is and includes Mendocino County, uh, Calusa County, Lake County, everything south of that along I-5. Uh, goes all the way um, to I-5 at Galt. This is the north unit. Falls along the McCollumie River and out into the bay. So that's the northern zone. <clears throat> uh, this map was taken off our website. You can. Uh, I'll include a link to it, um, that way you're aware of what, where that zone exists. The north unit has a lot of private land, as does the south. Uh, there's a lot of private land in this unit. Uh, most of the public opportunity in, in the northern unit is going to be the northern half of the unit and down the middle. So here's the northern boundary. Uh, if you were to proceed up in here, you're going to get into the B3. It's a B3 zone. Um, but, uh, and then looks like B1 over here. So you can't proceed past this area. This is the, these little lines, this looks like it's road 306. Anything south of that, uh, between there and East Park, Willits and East Park Reservoir, uh, is fair game with an A tag. There's a lot of forest service there. That's the Mendocino uh, National Forest. Um, and we have a lot of these brown areas here. These are called BLM properties, which are Bureau of Land Management. The original BLM, uh, that's what BLM stands for in, in the words that we're gonna be talking about tonight, Bureau of Land Management. They are the caretakers for um, a lot of our lands that are open to the public here in California. So um, that's gonna be a resource for you to use. So some of the, some of the uh, properties you're going to be looking at is some BLM land, which is north and south Cal Mountain. Uh, the access uh, one's part that this in first refers to is this area right here, uh, Cal Mountain. Uh, you can access it west of Lakeport. You can see uh, where did Lakeport go? There's Lakeport right there. So from the west side uh, and Let's see, or from Mendocino County, uh, east of Ukiah, okay? Hunting is tough in this area. There's deer and bear in this area, but if you want more access information, you need to call the Ukiah or contact the Ukiah BLM field office. They're the ones that are gonna be able to tell you if there's any restrictions in that area, what kind of permits that you should have. Sometimes there's orders that come due to um, fires or things like that. So make sure you know that information before you go out. Uh, the Mendocino National Forest access from Mendocino County through Potter Valley, okay, toward Lake Pillsbury. Lake Pillsbury is up here at the northern border. And uh, from Lake County, north of Upper Lake. So you can come from Upper Lake, come up into this district, all this Forest Service. This is the area you're going to be concentrating at Forest Service lands, have good roads, usually you can access a lot of area. And honestly, the places you want to access most is getting off the road, getting away from the roads and find those areas that um, people haven't been. So 
uh, do some scouting. Obviously, um, we had some webinars covering uh, virtual scouting. You can look at this topography via the internet and get an idea of where you might want to hunt prior to going out there. Um, so access is good in these areas, and there's a ton of different areas to hunt along the northern border of A zone, referring to this. Um, the forest burned in the Mendocino complex fire in 2018, so there are a lot of uh, deadfall and uh, new growth throughout the area. Prime habitat for deer. After a fire, if you get the brush growing back and you get some grasses opened up forest, they are prime areas for, for deer to go move into. So you can get more information by going to the Forest Service Station in Upper Lake. Um, also in the northern unit, if you look along Highway 20 here, there's extensive chunks of BLM property, basically that go um, between Cache Creek and Clear Lake. Uh, there's a lot of BLM land. Um, I do recommend you get some type of hunt app that shows you property uh, lines, some type of uh, GPS unit that shows you where you're at in relation to public lands and private lands. Those really do help. So uh, also in that area that's really a, a good area, gets a lot of um, hunting pressure, is the Knoxville wildlife area. And unfortunately, um, you, you can't go to that for the first seven days unless you were drawn through a uh, drawing that was held. And um, the deadline for that drawing this last year was June 20th. I just wanted you to be aware that there is an application period for that. Knoxville, in the future, you wanna try it out. Uh, look for um, news on that application period on our CDF news or our, our Facebook page. They usually post that information when there's hunt applications available for our wildlife areas. So it is controlled um, August 14th through the 20th, but after that, uh, August 21st through the end of the season, it will be open to the public. Okay. The Southern unit, um, and Jared's gonna help me out with this area. Southern unit basically runs, like I said, from Colomy River up in the north, uh, by out through the Sassoon, uh, the marsh out into the bay, and uh, goes all the way down to Los Angeles County, okay? Very extensive district, uh, includes a lot of areas that have uh, Los Padres National Forest, that's the primary hunt area. Um, there are also some, some BLM lands, uh, that are available and Jared will lead us through that. So I'll go ahead and let you uh, break in here, Jared. Um, okay. Did you wanna go off my screen and just tell me to go forward or do you wanna do it at your yeah. pace? I'll probably have you go off your screen, but if you go, okay. you have your little highlighter there where yes. the big sur area is right there. If you look along the coast highway one, that's yes. of wilderness there you have a lot of different options for access and those, a lot of those areas are burnt. So there's first and second year growth, which is prime habitat for deer in those areas. That might be something to look into. There is a downside to these areas. They are steep and they're steep and it's hard hunting and you got to hike in uh, quite, a way, quite a ways for them to work. So um, where are we at? Yeah. I have a little bit different slides than what you have, but if you want to go ahead and cover us, we'll yes. hit it twice. Yeah. So um, if you go inland there to Fresno and San Diego County areas, there is some, some options for BLM properties. The issue with them that you run into, though, is um, it's very tough hunting. And, it, and during the summertime, it can get pretty warm. So if you're gonna do it, you gotta plan, you gotta have a plan what you're gonna do, bring your water in, um, be very cognizant of what you're doing. Cause if it gets hot, um, you know, you don't wanna get dehydrated out there on the trail doing what you're doing. So. Hey, Sean, yes. Yeah, yeah, so Sean, Jared, uh, we got a question about hunting the properties that have the slash line through it. I'm assuming they're talking on the map. So do we know what property ownership that is? That's Los Padres National Forest. There we go. Answered it live. Yeah, and that's called uh, the those are, those are known as wilderness areas. 
So sometimes I'll have uh, restricted vehicle access through them. I'll try and break it down later on. I have a few more slides down here sort of break down the different areas that have access for that area along Highway 1. Um, so we'll go, we'll work on that when we go down. So, okay. Yeah, right. So, so we are talking about Fresno and San Benito, um, properties inland there in the San Benito County. There is some BOM, but you just got to be cognizant of the heat and having water so you don't get dehydrated. And then going further down, you see the Monterey County line right there with the Los Padres National Forest. And it also goes into San Luis Obispo County on the coastline. And there's some inland as well. And then there's a bunch of BLM that is in San Luis Obispo County, um, southeastern San Luis Obispo County that has access to elk and deer and pigs and all the above. So we're there way down. Another option that we will talk about is Fort Hunter Liggett which you can get access to. Um, you basically pay as pay a fee per year to have access to the hunt zones in Fort Hunter Liggett. And they allow certain areas that are open. The kernel at the base allows certain areas to be open at certain times during the week and during the weekends that uh, can be open to the public if you're a member out there, okay? We run into, in Monterey and San Luis Obispo County areas here, um, a lot of private land, so access can be difficult. There are a bunch of guides in this area that still do deer as well. Um, you have a higher success rate with the private lands and guides. If you have a list, need a list of guides, I'm sure I can get Sean a list of guides in this area if you're interested in that. Um, there's a higher success rate, usually one to two day hunts. Um, it, it is a higher monetary cost is what I would say, but you it cuts your time down in the field if that's what you're looking for, which I want more time in the field, me personally. Um, but the private property guys are actually doing, they do crops for like safflower for deer and for pigs and barley for pigs and deer. Um, they do it as a revenue source um, for themselves. So but public lands, you do have a little bit of a lower success rate. You probably got to go out multiple times, um, but you have a lower initial cost and it gives you more time in the field, which I like. So let me go to the next one here, next slide. So what, what public lands do we have for deer? Um, in Monterey County, there's a lot of different lands that we have. There's Lost Padres National Forest, there's Fort Henry Liggett, uh, military base and Camp Roberts military base, and there's BLM, Bureau of Land Management. So those are just a few examples of just pictures all around um, that we have and we've looked at. So I'm going to go to the next one. So when we were talking about the Highway 1 um, up by Mon in Monterey County there, talk about Choose Ridge and China Campgrounds. So there's access uh, from the South Coast Ridge Road and other access in the back that coming along Highway 1 um, and Nassimena Ferguson Road to get to these areas. So the downside to these, these areas, there are deer there, but it is very steep. So um, they're rough terrain. There's, it's a man, Manzanita Oak Woodlands area. Um, I do see deer hunters have success there, though. They, they are successful. So if you're willing to put up with it and go through there, you, you could be successful. Also in Monterey County, coming down by Arroyo Seco River there, where you're going into Arroyo Seco, there's a place called Piney Creek. It's a smaller one road in, um, pretty dense, uh, and it deads in, dead ends, and it has a seasonal creek that people hike to, to go find deer. They, they do all right, but it's not, it's just a small area. So sometimes there's a lot of people there. Who are, who are accessing that area. If you go all the way down to Royal Seca River um, from Highway 101 and working your way that way, you'll pass Piney Creek there and then you'll go into Royal Seco. I have checked some people who do hunt at a Royal Seco, but uh, the issue with that is most of the time it's just people who are um, day users or campers um, when they're there. So it's just a big open camp. So. Going to the next one. Going south from there, 
So a row of Seiko actually used to have a, a road that used to go all the way around and actually would come into a memorial campground, also known as the Indians on the back side of uh, Camp Roberts there. Well, they don't, you don't have access anymore, but it comes back down that way, same, same river area. The memorial campground, also known as the Indians, I actually have seen a lot of deer hunting activity here. Uh, you, I would go out there when I was the first war and I'd see 30 deer a night hanging out there in the shade in the evenings. They weren't bucks, but they were deer. So if you were, the people who are successful there in the Indians area, they usually will get out and they'll hike. They hike deeper in, the further you go, the better and the better options you have. And you're off the beaten path of everybody else because there are a lot of people who will drive the roads. They won't get out. But if you get out and you hike on the areas, it works good. One thing I do have to say about it, though, make sure you have a GPS um, because there is some private ground in there mixed with military ground. So you've got to, if you have an access to a GPS, it might help you um, to see where you're at. Okay. Nazi Minnesota Ferguson Road is. Uh, South of south of Del Venturi Road, which takes you into the Indians. If you go on this road, it will take you over the top and will take you to Highway 1 and the South Coast Ridge Road on that side. So there is deer in there, uh, but it is really, really steep. And there are two campgrounds there that you could camp at, and there's other places you can camp, but uh, it is pretty steep. Um, really, really steep hillsides and thick brush. A lot of people hunt squirrels there, um, very few pigs, but in that area, it, it's steep, but I know people who have who do kill deer up in there, so. All right. Um, Jared, really quick, on those campgrounds, if people were to try to go stay there, is there a permitting process or fees or uh, self-register? I think, I believe it's self-register right now, but I don't know for sure, I'd have to double check. Um, okay. Usually, it, you just go to Nos, uh, na <clears throat> just go with a uh, national forest, and you can get a, a permit to go into there. Um, they are not allowing fire permits now because of everything that's been going on. Uh, from what I read today, um, that's that's what I do know. So usually you get a permit, and you you can reserve a campground, calling the national forest right there in the Memorial Campground. So, all right, all right. <clears throat> Uh, so this is going along the coast here. I tried to big, take a big screenshot of it here. If you take, if you go on the, use the pointer right there, you can see Ragged Point at the very bottom of the page. Very bottom of the page is Ragged Point. This is along the coastline. And that's where San Carpaforo Creek comes in. Well, there is a lot of property up here where I've patrolled and seen deer. And I know people who have been su successful hunting deer up on this side. Um, it's pretty steep. It's pretty steep, but once you get on top, it sort of flattens out and you can hunt canyons and valleys in there. A lot of archery guys go up here. Um, you just have to be prepared when you're doing it. This will butt up to the Hearst property as well. So Hearst fence line is there and it will go down to different saddles. And if you go farther back in, it can get pretty thick. And it goes all the way up to the Monterey County line and it continues on. So that's part of the Ventana Wilderness area. So that is the Monterey County line where Sean was just on going across. And then it goes up in Monterey County, still part of the Ventana Wilderness. And if you continue up, you'll pass Salmon Creek, Willow Creek, and Plaskett Ridge, which will take you, um, is, is open, is, is open. Uh, Devenue just said that, Justin Devenue just said that Piney Creek is closed, so just so everybody knows, um, and up into Ragged Point. So there are access points up in there that you can get in, but this is mostly hike-in, so on this side, so most people will park alongside the road by Ragged Point in, leave their stuff, they'll hike in from there. So, but it's all by foot, there's no vehicle access. And the other trails as well are basically hiking. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's been a lot of Jared. There's been a lot of questions about countersign tags, so I really want to address it with some okay. of the, uh, people. 
So um, countersigning is basically after you've harvested or, um, a deer, you've, you've killed a deer, you uh, fill it out, there's two halves to the tag, you fill out both halves, and basically one of the halves that you retain with the meat has to be countersigned by somebody who is authorized to do so. Uh, there's a list of people, it's, I think, I don't know if they include it on the tag nowadays, but it's in the regulations. Uh, let me see. I'm going to see if I have my tag here. It's uh, on uh, 4341 um, mentions by a public uh, notary, postmaster, postmistress, uh, peace officer, and other administrative uh, authorized under oath. And uh, Jake brought up a good point that I don't know if people, people can't see some of the questions uh, within the chat, but um, do yourself a favor as hunting, going out in the field and think about that prior to going out and hunting. Make sure you have a plan so that if you do uh, are fortunate enough to harvest a deer, that you have an option of where you can go and take that deer counter to get a counter sign, whether that's a local CDF station, local fire, or a local police station or sheriff department. You know, make sure you have that, you know, think about that prior to going out. Yeah. You can st stop at a CHP uh, office along the highway, any fire station. There's numerous fire stations along the roadways. You can look for the signs, you know, just looking for uh, those places where, you know, officials, state park officers, uh, county, you know, officers. Uh, there's different things that you can have, different people that can do your countersigning. And basically that has to be retained with the meat. Uh, for at least 30 days, uh, or the, with the antlers, at least 30 days past the season. Okay. All right. Um, where were we at? So you're talking about, there's some really good questions, and I see in the chat. I think what we'll do is we'll address some of them live afterwards. Um, there's one here about BLM land outside of Davenport. I don't know where Davenport is in relations. Anybody know that where Davenport is? No. All right. So if you can pose that question, JW, again, uh, tell us where what county Davenport is in or, or more specifically, maybe a neighboring town. Oh, Santa Cruz. Somebody said Santa Cruz. Um, I don't know that area, uh, how much BLM is there. Um, let me see. Yeah, you'll have to, you, I, I believe that the BLM office that you'll have to talk to is Marina. They have an office there in Marina that that would be the one you'd have to contact and ask them about that particular unit. Most BLM properties have a unit name and they would be able to tell you which activities are lawful in that district or in that uh, unit. Okay. All right. Uh, so we're here we are. Let me close my chat box and we'll go to the next slide, hopefully. So this is uh, basically Fort Hunter Liggett. So it's about 165,000 acre military base that is basically in Lockwood and on off of Holland Road in between um, King City and San Miguel. Um, it is an area allowed to regulate it. I should we should say regulated public hunting where you have to go um, you have to pay for a permit, you have to go in and register your firearm, and you have to be vetted for access. So um, you have to take your gun in, you have to show them what gun is, your serial number, you have to get the permit to be there, um, and then you are able to be able to go hunt there. Uh, there's about 31 hunting and training areas in this complex. They only allow certain, the colonel and the training uh, limits what areas are open. So, um, for example, well, we had a elk season that was going on, but the colonel had some special training coming in and they said, nope, we're shutting down these areas and only they, these areas are open. So it is, that is the limiting fact to that. There, there is a very decent rate of deer harvest off of here though. Um, I've seen anywhere from 50 to 150 deer taken a year out of here. And if you put the time in, um, you will eventually have success doing this. Um, there are designated walk-in areas also along Hoon Road um, and Inner Lake Road where you can walk in, and, but they're limited to what you can use, whether it be rifle, 
or a shotgun or bow. So you have to know what you're what you're in for when you're doing those. Okay. Um, talk, going again, talking about some are just limited to archery only um, or muzzleloaders. Certain areas are muzzleloaders, and then other ones are general weapons that are in those areas. So, and they only have limit. There's a phone in system that goes with it. So you have to phone in and tell everybody what zone you're going into and they limit the amount of people that can be in each one of those zones at one time. So. All right. So if you're interested in that process for Hunter Liggett, there's a link right there and you can get signed up. Um, and there's an internet browser. If you wanna search it through the internet browser, just put Fort Hunter Liggett hunting and it will explain everything that you need to do to um, get that lined out for you to be able to hunt there. So, okay. Going on. So Camp Roberts is the other military installation. Uh, it is in between, right in between King City and San Miguel as well. It's just a little further south of Fort Hunter Liggett. They do, it's about 42,000 acres. Um, it, their hunt program is very similar to that of Fort Hunter Liggett, um, but it's not, I, I have to say it's not as streamlined and the hunting is not necessarily year round. They only open it up to certain times and certain areas at, at one time. So I've seen it to where they've only opened like one or two weekends a year for deer. Um, and uh, it, there's a lot of late notice. An example of that is um, spring turkey. Uh, but you can't take wild pigs while you're there. Um, and you have to be mindful of upcoming hunts to know what is open and what is not. So just be very mindful of what you're doing. So it costs about $125 a year for the animal permit. Um, you, again, you have to register your firearm and become vetted in the process. Uh, again, but they're open they are more limited than that, I should, I would say, than uh, Fort Hunter Liggett. Roberts has more limited access. Um, but there is, if you happen to get it to where they have it open on a weekend and you're there and you get to do it, there's a lot of deer there. There's, there's a lot of deer there. So um, I, there's also a link right there where you can look at it. And talking about real ID, you got to have your real, real ID to do it. So, okay. Monterey County. Now that we're, now we're talking about uh, BLM land in Monterey County. Uh, so William Hill is the start basically of Halone Road there, uh, where you go through Halone. There's it's pretty steep and it's dense with vegetation, and it's surrounded by um, a lot of private land, I should say. So you're sort of getting the deer and the pigs that are coming in and out of that area, um, and a lot of people who will target shoot up there. So you, you gotta watch that a little bit. So Stockdale Mountain and Parkfield, it, it is surrounded by private land as well. Uh, you, got, you really need to research the area when you are going into this area because there's intermixed private land with public land and it, it, it can get, there's some ranchers up there who get upset because people cut across. So just make sure you know where you're going. So. There are some deer that have been taken out of there, um, but you're mostly waiting for them to cross into the BLM area from the private. Okay. The interesting thing about this, the most successful people here are the ones who actually hike farther in than the other ones because some people stop. So if you get off the beaten path where people are, the more people are successful the further they go. Okay. In San Benito County, there's Laguna Mountain and Sweetwater off of Highway 25. Um, there is a campground to stay and there are several trails to hike out on. There are pigs that are taken here. There are some deer, um, but it is very dense. I, I have to say it, it's a very dense vegetation area. So if you do shoot something, it, there's been some pigs that have been lost in that area because of the dense vegetation. So just be mindful of that. Uh, Clear Creek and Condon, uh, Condon Peak, this is, you need a BLM permit is required to be in those areas. It's about 63 acres. Um, there's drive-on areas and there's walk-in areas. It's a very, very, very dry area. So, and that's Fresno County area. So, 
63,000 is this, right? No, I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. <laughs> my bad. 63,000. So, um, Nene Kalinga, there's the Mineral Springs off of Highway 198. It is a hiking only area. Uh, it's pretty low success rate. So, yeah, really quick, uh, I have a couple of friends who hunt Laguna Mountain, and what he said about very dense vegetation is true. Uh, yeah. If you have an opportunity to, to shoot at a deer there, uh, and you you know you're going to take a shot, have your partner watch, and have your partner mark it, and stay with that mark, because when you uh, if you were to all leave both leave that you know vantage point to try to find where that deer was shot, you could lose your mark. So just like dove hunting. You see a bird fall, you mark it, you stay there, you keep on it till your partner gets to it and hopefully you can find it. Same thing needs to happen at Laguna Mountain. If, if, if at all possible, both you, you know, one person goes to try and find it, one person keeps the mark. Yep, good point. So, all right. So moving south, there is the big Sandy wildlife area. Um, which is just on the north side of Camp Roberts. Um, access is the issue with this one. So legal access is hard to get. Um, if you have permission from Camp Roberts, you could go onto the base and they could go, then you could go across the fence through there is an issue. Uh, the other, you can get access through Bradley Bridge on Highway 101, which you'd be going north on Highway 101 and you'd stop on the side of the bridge and you can jump out and jump right into the wildlife area um that's that's the issue with that area is just the access itself because it's a landlocked property um i've seen pigs there i've seen ducks there i know people who hunt ducks and deer and pigs in there and they could be successful and every now and then you'll see some elk going through there as well so uh, just be mindful of it okay Merced County. So you have the upper and lower Cottonwood Creek wildlife areas. Um, these are seasonal areas open with archery deer and closes at the end of January. So uh, it's a, the upper is a general weapons area and lower area is restricted to archery and shotgun only. So if you walk in, uh, you will find a sign that basically says what is there. So make sure you pay attention to the signs um, and go out. If you're going to go to this area, make sure you use Google Earth and find out the water sources and the flat areas to find where you can find the animals at. Okay. Yeah, let me let me expand on that a little bit, yeah. Jerry. That was my district for a while. Oh, you yeah, you need to expand on that. So, <laughs> so um, both these areas, Upper Cottonwood um, and Lower Cottonwood. Well, actually, there's another, there's a third one, San Luis Reservoir Wildlife Area. All three will be controlled on opening weekend for the first two days. So they already had a draw. I think it's coming up in a future slide, but they already had a draw for access on the opening weekend. Um, so you can't go out there opening weekend, but Monday, the day after the opening weekend, you can start going out there hunting. Um, Upper Cottonwood is all foot access only. There's no drive thing. You're gonna be parking in designated parking lots or along the highway. Uh, San Luis Reservoir Wildlife Area, is a little section between um, Dinosaur Point Road and Highway 152, a little triangle place they call it the Horseshoe. Uh, does have deer in it. Um, they're kind of in and out because next door is the state park property. So sometimes they're in there and sometimes they're not. Um, and then Lower Cottonwood is down by O'Neill Forbay. Uh, it's a shotgun and archery only area. Very open. Um, there are some trees and some little cuts and stuff in there. Um, you, you'll catch them by chance. Um, sometimes they come into the property from the neighboring state park and a lot of deer are harvested when that happens. So those are the ones that you'll have. Uh, we'll talk about them a little bit later with techniques and how to, uh, tactics on how to hunt some of this A zone. Um, but that's that what I have on Merced County, uh, Upper and Lower Cottonwood. All right, all to you. All to me, all right. So if there's a, there's a big sandy wildlife area that's in the Monterey County area, and there's a big sandy wildlife area in San Luis Obispo County. So there's a northern and southern 
wildlife area. The Big Sandy in San Miguel is in San Luis Obispo County. Um, access is off of like Indian Valley Road um, in San Miguel. Uh, there's actually a pull out area where you can drive into. There's there's good parking. Make sure you lock your stuff up though. Um, some people come by there and they're just people are people. That's wherever you go. So um, there's actually good quail hunting there. There's pigs that are seen in there. There's turkey seen in there. When I was younger, uh, when I was younger, they you, know, you could actually find deer in there all the time. Um, now there's private areas there that they have fields on one side and vineyards on another and the deer will sometimes stumble, sometimes stumble in there. You just have to be, you have to be in the right place at the right time. So um, that, <laughs> that's the, the issue with that. <coughs> so also in San Luis Obispo County with BLM, we have, um, there's a lot of BLM land out in California Valley in that side. Uh, it involves the Chimeneas Ranch and the Northern Unit and the American Unit. It's sort of all lumped together in one big area. The Chimeneas Ranch is off of the 166 and it's the Southern Unit. Uh, there's no deer hunting in there. However, there are people who hike in on the days that are accessible and they hunt deer on the BLM land behind um, the Southern Chimeneas Ranch Unit. Um, they hide, <laughs> there's actually guys who hide guns back in there and hide materials so they can hunt deer and pigs back in that area. So the northern unit of the Chimeneas Ranch um, has junior hunts annually. So if anybody signed up for uh, any junior hunts, uh, it's a really great program for the kids. They get to go in and they actually have like people who guide them to go get hunts. So if you have kids, I would advise anybody to go do it. Um, the American unit here is uh, is is our property basically, and it's a walk-in area. It's open year round. Um, there has some water sources, there's guzzlers, there's springs. You can see pigs there quite often uh, year round uh, around the water. Um, there are, there is a deer population there as well. Um, again, they're not, they're not gonna be big bucks. They're just they're decent little fork and horns, but uh, there are people who are successful there every year. So, and they, they love it. Um, I like that place out there. I patrol, I, I patrol there for a long time. I love it out there. So um, there's also a draw for elk hunting if people are asked to elk hunting uh, for cow and uh, bull tags. Um, also further south of there is a uh, Caliente Ridge. So Caliente Ridge is, uh, you can go up on the very top and their trailhead the hikes out. And if you, you can hike out 12 miles all the way to the highest point in San Luis Obispo County and hunt the fingers. Pretty harsh, pretty steep, but I know people who kill bucks there every year. Um, it's just, and you gotta be prepared because it's hot. It's really hot in that area. So um, yeah, if you look down there, I think I put the link of Crease Plains right there. And we'll go to the next slide. All right, all right. really quick, a uh, couple of questions we had. Um, do you need a parking permit in Los Padres National Forest or a camping permit? I don't know that. Okay. I think so. I, I do have a U.S. Fish and uh, Forest Service uh, link for Los Padres, and you, you, you can look that up when I send it to you after our webinar. Yeah. All, All right. right. Going on to the next ones. There's some other areas to consider um, in San Luis Obispo County area here. Uh, there's a Los Padres National Forest uh, that in Pozo area, um, which has Red Hill Road and the Pozo area, Rinconada Trailheads. Um, it's there's high mountain as well in those areas where you can go kill deer. A little harder hunting, it's pretty steep, um, but there is access that you. It's sort of weather dependent. The cooler it seems to be, the more deer seem to come out hotter it seems to come they bed down and they aren't coming out so it, it's pretty weather dependent uh, that's what I have found out there um, there's another and rock front is on the boundary of highway 166 Santa Barbara County and San Luis Obispo County I've seen people be successful at rock front and Sierra Madre in those areas um, but they go deep deep back in there and um, it's usually better when there's after a fire when there's some growth there that they do do a lot better 
The other place that I forgot to mention in here is Sierra Alto, which is between Atascadero and Morro Bay. Um, there is a campground there at Sierra Alto. You can go in there and stay, you can hike in. Um, you hike in, I know people who are successful there quite often. Um, uh, they hike in, it's usually about a three or four mile hike or so, and it butts up to what they call the Eagle Ranch. Um, and you can catch deer coming in and out of there from the Eagle Ranch. So you just got to pay attention where you're at and know where you're at so you aren't trespassing on to the other ranch. That's a high, uh, high poison oak area too, right? Yes, 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 it is. So as long as you stay on the trailhead, and once you get past a certain point, it will, yeah, it will sort of. Dissipate. Yeah, some of some of these properties, people that you you're asking about, and the, the coastline is infamous for poison oak. And if you haven't dealt with it before, some people are lucky; they're immune to it. Uh, I catch it very easily, and I've had to get steroid shots in order to recover from it to tell you the truth it's it's it can be pretty devastating for a lot of people so some of the stuff yeah. on the coast is bad really yes. really bad and sierra alto can be very very bad as well so yeah so just be aware uh know what it looks like and know what your tolerance of it is yep so um so on the southern end uh, i talked a little bit about sierra madre and Miranda Pines and Rockfront. There's also some opportunity at Vandenberg Air Force Base possibility. Um, it's sort of operates for like 400 Liggett. Um, uh, it, mostly it's open to people who are in the military themselves. So if you're ex-military, you might have a chance, but not necessarily if you aren't. So the... Other part is the Carrizo Plains Ecological Reserve off of Highway 166. And again, I said it's not open to deer hunting, um, but there is some pig hunting allowed. So, all right. I think I'll I'm to you. <laughs> I'll take it from here. Uh, thanks, Jared. Yeah. So, you know, we've kind of told you some places you can go, and kind of, uh, I've seen some questions come across about you know, how, how can you be successful in these areas? And the biggest thing, first off, is just make sure your plant hunting grounds are open when you intend to go and understand what is required for your access or stay. If you're gonna try to camp in the back country, there's, you know, different rules that you have to have. You might have to have a permit in order to do that outside of a campground. Um, you might need like a, a, a pass in order to stand, spend an ASIC extended period of time out in the wilderness. Um, be aware of any orders that have been made regarding fires or use of cooking methods. You know, you, sometimes you're not even allowed to have any open flame, uh, any type of little burner. Uh, sometimes those are restricted. Uh, so we want to make sure, you know, this year especially, uh, we see fires going off everywhere. Fire is an extreme concern about all these areas. Uh, we don't want to be that person who starts a fire, okay? whether it's just for your own safety or just for the environment's sake. Uh, many of the areas are very arid and can be physically demanding and be prepared for hot temperatures. We have that early season, July, August, September, still very hot, even along the coast, okay? Bring plenty of liquids to drink. I don't know if there's a magic number of what you could do with or do without. Um, I know that a lot of times uh, us game wardens out in the field patrolling these areas, we'll have rescues that we have to do because people didn't have enough um, water and they have heat exhaustion, possibly heat stroke from uh, their experiences. The A-zone seasons, like I said, middle of the summer and they will test your will and desire. You might think that you can do some things, but when you're sitting in a bowl of a mountain area and the heat's just beating down on you and you've drank all your water already, uh, you know, you could be totally uh, past the point of return on some of these points. So a lot of people like to wait till the latter part of the season. And I'll tell you, like I said, this year, this is the time to, to hunt a zone in the latter part of the season, usually the last week. And unfortunately I'm telling you one of the secrets to success that last week of the season, if we get any type of cool down, cool weather, the, the, the deer are going to be running. The, the bucks are going to be looking for does to breed 
and they get stupid. Anywhere that you saw does earlier in the season, those are the areas that you're going to want to visit because those are where the bucks are going to be. Um, opening weekends are nice. Yeah, if you can secure a permit, the number of hunters in the field can get a lot of game moving, but that's also a problem too. Sometimes they're moving and they're moving out of the area that you can hunt in. So sometimes too much pressure is, is bad, but a lot of times some of the pressure, if it's planned and executed by different groups, you can get good drives and good observation points, be able to kill some nice deer as they move out of heavy cover. But know your location. Um, many of the opportunities in California may be small, bordered by private properties uh, with no legal access. So you know, if you acquire that Onyx maps or some other type of mapping tool that shows you where your location is and what property it is, that's gonna keep you from getting in any trouble. It's gonna help you with marking waypoints of where your camp is, where you're, uh, you know, where you're, where you were shooting from, where you last found the blood trail, you know, for your, for your deer that you shot. Uh, that could help you locate your game if you can't find it that night, come back in the morning and, and find that animal. So, um, you know, those type of applications uh, or tools, a GPS unit, uh, you know, your phone, those are very um, useful tools to have in the field. Um, tactics for success, okay? Find water. This is a, an arid hunt area. Uh, find good overhead cover. Some places where deer can just get under some cover, get shaded from the hot sun. They spend a, lot, a majority of their middays underneath some buck brush, some oaks, uh, different types of, you know, um, just different types of material out there where they can view the area, they can see around them, they can smell what's coming from below them or where they can't see and um, just find those areas that they, they move between. Uh, so we wanna find good observation points so we can glass. Glassing is basically watching an area with your binoculars or spotting scope. Um, mornings and evenings are higher activity periods. Uh, be in the field before legal shooting hours, okay? And stay until the last legal shooting minute, if you can. Uh, you might see a lot of stuff come out at that certain point. It might reveal something for you to, to uh, look at the next time you go out. So try to take advantage of those low light um, morning and evening time periods. <clears throat> uh, watch for upcoming cool downs or weather changes. Look at your weather that's happening. If you get some type of cool down, Basically, in the late season, my, you know, as a game warden, whenever I patrolled my area, which was, you know, upper cottonwood, lower cottonwood, I would look for those periods of time when we had uh, dew was on my truck in the morning. There was uh, temperatures of, you know, 55 degrees or less for three consecutive nights. That seemed to be a trigger to get some of the bucks moving, chasing the does. So that was something I looked for. If, if I found nights where, you know, in the morning there was dew on my truck, it was crisp, uh, I, could, I can guarantee that there were some deer um, being pursued up on the, on the pass. So that was, that's what starts the rut is that cool down. And that rut is when the bucks are looking to breed does. They're out there chasing, you know, looking for whatever does they can find. And they're somewhat not cognizant of what's going on around them. So that's an opportunity to harvest a, a, a buck. So remember during the season where the does were and where they've been, because that's where the bucks will now be. Um, and be ready for success, okay? Tag your game, take your pictures, then get to work quickly. Because as soon as you're, uh, you, take, you harvest that animal, uh, there's bacteria in the, in the rumen that uh, is getting ready to, you know, expand. It's breeding, it's getting hot. It's, uh, you know, it's doing the things that it does. That's what bacteria is there for. It's supposed to break down the animal uh, upon death. And so you wanna remove those um, entrails, uh, remove the hide, consider quartering and placing in breathable game bags, okay? Don't take black plastic uh, garbage bags that just retains heat, doesn't let it breathe and you'll come back to your uh, you know, truck with this gooey 
stuff in your backpack. It's, it's just not good. Use a shade of, or a, of any object possible, shade of rock, shade of, you know, whatever type of shade is out there. If you can hang that bag of meat and let some type of breeze, you know, pull through it, it'll, it'll draw some of that heat off of the, off of the meat. So be ready for that. Um, if you need help, look at some of the videos online to get help for how to field dress a deer in hot weather. Those are the type of uh, learnings that you need to pursue in order to, to do a good job. Um, and then I think one more slide is all I have. Uh, I was asked to, to share this, and this is about chronic wasting disease, okay? Chronic wasting disease has not been detected in California yet. We don't want it here. Uh, it's very prevalent, as you can see, in the mid-states of the Midwest here, or not Midwest, the, actually it's still the West, but all these states right here have had uh, cases of chronic wasting disease. Uh, it is very detrimental to cervids such as deer and elk. We don't want it here. We already have herds that, uh, you know, not as high as we'd like them to be, is persistent in the environment. Once it gets here, once it, it gets where in the states that it is, it goes into the ground. There's little prions is what they're called. They exist in the environment for a long time. And once the cervids pick it up, uh, it continues to cycle. Um, so there is uh, some links that I included in our links page that will give you some locations and dates that they are voluntarily collecting uh, samples. If you wanna get your deer um, tested for chronic wasting disease, uh, you can do that. Um, like I said, there'll be a, a list of locations and um, uh, dates available. So regardless of where you get the deer, you might be able to coordinate something to, to get your, your um, deer tested. Um, panelists, are there any questions that, that I should be answering uh, live? Uh, let's see, what do you recommend? Um, there was, I remember doing, seeing a question about getting countersigned. Uh, somebody asked about hunter ed instructors. Yes, they still are eligible to uh, countersign big game tags. And I'll tell you, if you know who your hunter ed instructor is or where they live or whatever, and you give them the opportunity to countersign your deer tag, they will thoroughly enjoy it. It'll be your opportunity to tell, you, tell them thanks for giving you the opportunity to go out and hunt in the field. Uh, because that's what they do it for. They want to see you have a good time. Um, let's see. Any other questions that you guys can, Greg or Robert, that need to be discussed? Jake? All right. Nobody's offering anything. Chase, I saw you had some really good questions and comments about uh, getting out there and scouting. One of them I think you asked was, hey, would it be a good idea to scout in the wintertime or in the, in the spring? Uh, yeah, anytime you can learn the lay of the land versus going out there and seeing it for the first time, that's, a, that's to your advantage, okay? Uh, it's a lot easier to scout during those cool periods of time, even though the game that you're pursuing may not be present at that time, just getting a lay of the land and having a plan for when you actually hunt it is a good idea. So make sure that the, that's a good way to do things. Um, anything else out there? Let me go ahead and stop my screen share and see what else I have. It's a little easier for me to look at this. All right, let me look at the chat. I think it's all been covered. This way, determine area is closed. Yeah, if you the best way I can determine if an area is closed is call the agency that manages the land. Okay, we as Fish and Wildlife, we don't know every answer to what Forest Service is doing or what BLM is doing. You need to call them and get the information straight from the horse's mouth, as they say. Uh, somebody wanted to know about the A32 hunt zone. That is, uh, we don't have any experts on that, that on this uh, webinar. I wanted to try and get one that patrols that area, but he was unavailable. I'm sorry that, about that. But that is an archery hunt down in Ventura in Los Angeles County that uh, if, we, if we can, um, I will send me an email, please. And I'll see if I can get you some, 
specific personal, I mean, one-on-one uh, -on -one information for you on that hunt. So Tristan, go ahead and email me and I'll see if I can forward your contact information to uh, that person in that area. Uh, it sounds like maybe you got that uh, drawn for that hunt. So congratulations. Um, all right. So I think uh, that's about all. Any, any of these questions that I see that I that, uh, didn't answer tonight, I will maybe try to come back to you and answer them. You can reach me through the um, confirmation email, through the reminder email that I sent out earlier. If you have personal questions that you wanna ask that weren't addressed, please uh, send them to me. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to help break down any barriers that you may have to entering the field. So bring them to me, all right? Um, see, I have a lot of questions. Uh, mentioned landowners staying out of trouble, private land. Uh, yeah, private landowners are, are not required to post all their land. If they have it fenced or under cultivation, that is something that um, meets the requirement of being private and needing to get uh, um, yeah, written permission. Uh, if it's open, unfenced, then they need to have three signs per mile. And what happens sometimes is some of the people are uh, going out there tearing off signs on people's property. Uh, but uh, usually what happens is the landowner, if they see somebody out there is not supposed to be, they'll try to just tell them to get off the property. But if they're not being cooperative, then they'll call enforcement. Um, scent killer around, would it be ethical to use that same campground? Uh, yeah, I mean, you can use, have littered tarps and scent killer. There's somebody asked about uh, old backpacking campsites. You know, you always want to come to a place and, and leave it better than you found it. Even if you weren't the cause of it, uh, you know, if you can leave a campground better than you found it and it works for you, then please do. Uh, Jared, you had somebody who wants to talk. If, like I said, if there's anybody who wants to ask Jared any questions, um, I can forward questions to him and hopefully he'll be able to answer them for you. Uh, yeah, what I was trying to help 832 get some areas down there. Right? So, but we already answered that question. So, okay. So, um, what if a hunter confronts me randomly? Litter does not necessarily make mark territory. Yeah, correct. No. You're out in public land, uh, doesn't belong to anybody. Um, just because you have some items in a camp doesn't make it yours. So, uh, you know, just be careful, choose your battles. Uh, some things are not worth the, the risk or, or the problems that they may create. Um, that's about it. All right. Well, like I said, anybody who has questions, please send them my way that we didn't answer. We'll be glad to handle them. Um, I need to go ahead and end this webinar and uh, we will catch you on the next one. Next one we'll be covering uh, dove hunting opportunities. I haven't posted it yet. Then we also have one that'll be specific to D11, D13 and D15 that will be presented on August 12th. So if that's an area that you might hunt, uh, look for that to be posted. All right, a lot of questions are still coming out. Uh, we will answer them at a later time. I do need to end this webinar and I will see you on the next time. Thanks.